In the age of social media, where the bizarre and extraordinary often find their way into the digital realm, one ordinary evening in Roswell, New Mexico, took an unprecedented turn. It all began when someone on social media uploaded a mysterious photograph. Roswell had long been a town steeped in mystery, its name forever associated with the infamous incident of 1947. The individual said that they found an old photo album filled with black and white photographs. Some of them depicted a small, grey, otherworldly figure laying down in a dimly lit room. Those who saw the photographs said that they recognised the uncanny resemblance of the figure to the descriptions of the alleged crash survivors, a small grey alien. The photograph had an unsettling aura, an eerie greenish glow cast upon the room and the enigmatic being at its centre. Within minutes of the photograph being uploaded to social media, it began to gain traction. Comments poured in, ranging from scepticism to excitement. The social media post had unleashed a storm of speculation, leading some to question whether this was evidence that small humanoids had been found at the site. As of right now, the photographs have sparked a renewed interest in the mysteries of that summer in 1947. On the fateful day of July 8, 1947, a significant event occurred that would not only forever be associated with the Roswell crash in New Mexico, but also shed light on a groundbreaking theory regarding unidentified objects. Surprisingly, it was on this very day that an interdimensional explanation first emerged, providing a potential origin for the enigmatic UAP phenomena. This explanation, however, remained relatively obscure for the next three decades, gradually gaining traction over time. Expanding upon this fascinating revelation, it becomes evident that the complexity and intrigue surrounding unidentified objects extend far beyond mere terrestrial explanations. On that particular day, Colonel Jesse Marcel made a public statement through a press release indicating that the United States Air Force had successfully retrieved an unidentified flying object, along with advanced beings, which had encountered a crash in the state of New Mexico. Regrettably, a subsequent press release was issued, significantly altering the facts presented in the initial statement and transforming the crashed object from an unidentified object to a weather balloon. This revision undoubtedly led to a change in the narrative surrounding the incident. The revised and enhanced theory regarding the weather balloon incident fails to provide any substantial information that would shed light on the perplexing circumstances surrounding Colonel Marcel's mistaken identification of a weather balloon as a crashed advanced craft containing alien remains. This incident is particularly intriguing as Colonel Marcel, a distinguished military officer with a remarkable military record and first-hand involvement in the delivery of the first nuclear weapons employed in warfare, encountered such confusion. On that particular day, the world witnessed the introduction of three significant elements on a large scale. Unidentified aerial phenomena, the extraterrestrial hypothesis and the captivating interdimensional hypothesis regarding the origins of both UFOs and UAPs. However, it is worth noting that the latter hypothesis only gained recognition when esteemed scientists like Jacques Vallée began considering the possibility of an alternative origin theory for these extraordinary phenomena, namely the interdimensional explanation. The FBI vault serves as a repository for an extensive collection of declassified files that delve into the enigmatic stories of the past. Among the various subjects that ignite curiosity and captivate public imagination, none can match the enduring intrigue surrounding unidentified objects and aliens. Deep within the vault, the FBI safeguards a multitude of documents that shed light on this extraordinary phenomenon, holding secrets that continue to bewilder and fascinate. Of particular significance within this vast trove is the Memorandum of Importance, which has garnered immense attention by those investigating these events. The narrative surrounding this particular document is far from being a straightforward case of seizing an opportunity disguised under the guise of public service with a supernatural touch. In fact, if one possesses a curiosity to explore further, it reveals a captivating and intricate story. It's crucial above all to keep in mind that this event took place in the year 1947. It is truly astonishing to comprehend that Edgar Hoover, who held the powerful position of the Federal Bureau of Investigation Director, displayed little concern for justice and regard for the public's right to be fully informed. Rather, 
he epitomized an extreme conservative and reactionary mindset that deviated significantly from the norm. His perspectives and ideologies diverged remarkably from those who prioritized fairness, equality, and the ethical dissemination of factual information. In the year 2010, it came to light from the information disclosed on the FBI's The Vault page that a report, specifically Memo 6751, was declassified. This report was prepared in July 1947 by a special agent of the FBI who held the rank of Lieutenant Colonel. However, Due to concerns regarding national security, and under Hoover's direction, a report based on an interview with an unidentified flying object witness was intentionally erased. The witness, who had a first-hand encounter with a non-human entity, possessed a wealth of information to share. This revelation sheds new light on the existence of unidentified flying objects, and the efforts made to suppress information related to them. The memo, an official document, acknowledges the undeniable existence of advanced beings. This is a matter of great importance, as emphasized by John de Souza, a former FBI officer. Based on the findings outlined in the report, it has been established that amidst a range of diverse species, we encounter beings not only from alternative planets, but also from alternate dimensions. To be more precise, these entities hail from the ethereal plane, which exists in parallel with our physical universe. These ethereal entities manifest themselves as towering figures with an intriguing translucency, appearing to us as colossal spectres. The central concept being explored in this report is the idea that the interdimensional hypothesis, which posits the existence of alternate dimensions as the source of unidentified object sightings, was initially established concurrently with the release of the Roswell Report in 1947. In this particular case, the FBI personnel have intentionally kept the identity of the individual responsible for writing the memo a secret. However, they have left behind two intriguing clues for us to ponder upon, Round Robin and the Flying Roll. These clues serve as breadcrumbs leading us to the revelation that the author of the cautionary advisory is none other than Newton Mead Lane. In 1946, Lane ventured into the realm of publishing by creating The Round Robin, a newsletter that delved into the realm of arcane knowledge much in the style of the renowned Charles Fort. Due to financial limitations, Lane opted for mimeographing rather than traditional printing methods for distribution. This initial endeavor proved to be just the beginning, as Lane later introduced the flying role to expand and augment his reach. The concept of multiple universes existing beyond our own has been a long-standing idea throughout human history. It has been understood that our physical senses only provide a limited perception of reality, and there is a greater scope of existence beyond what we can observe. This notion of additional, unobserved universes highlights the underlying belief that the universe we inhabit is just one piece of a larger cosmic puzzle. Lane, in his pursuit to comprehend unidentified objects, sought to relate them to his prior experiences in delving into the realm of the unseen. In his document titled Memo 6751, he explicitly states that the origin of these unidentified flying objects is not the commonly referred to astral plane, but rather corresponds to the metaphysical concepts of locus or talus. He assumes that individuals with a background in esoteric knowledge will grasp the significance of these terms. To put it differently, unidentified objects are classified as vehicles that facilitate traversing between different dimensions of existence. In essence, they enable interdimensional travel offering a transcendental perspective to the observers. The interdimensional hypothesis, which was initially sparked by Lane's early exploration of an ancient cosmological concept in relation to unidentified objects, underwent a gradual evolution over a span of several decades. During the 1970s, the interdimensional hypothesis emerged as a compelling alternative to the well-accepted extraterrestrial hypothesis. Renowned experts in the field, including Mead Lane, John Keel, J. Allen Hynek and Jacques Vallée endorsed this perspective. The interdimensional hypothesis proposes that unidentified flying objects represent a contemporary manifestation of a phenomenon that dates back to ancient times. In earlier eras, this phenomenon was often attributed to mythological or supernatural beings. As we explore the interdimensional hypothesis in greater depth, we find that it suggests unidentified object encounters 
are not solely restricted to encounters with extraterrestrial life forms. The well-known incident that took place in July 1947 near Roswell, New Mexico, is one that has gone down in history. According to the story, a large unidentified craft made contact with the ground in that area. William Ware Mac Brazell, a local rancher, stumbled upon wreckage during the same year, which he believed to be connected to the numerous flying saucer sightings reported at that time. The military responded by sending Major Jesse Marcel to investigate the crash site and retrieve the debris. Initially, a press release was issued, stating that a flying disc had been recovered, but the following day, the official narrative changed, and it was claimed to be nothing more than a weather balloon. However, as time went on, the Air Force revised their account and declared that neither version of the story was accurate. Instead, they asserted that the wreckage was actually a device used for espionage purposes, specifically to spy on the Soviet Union. This incident has since gained notoriety and remains a subject of much debate and speculation. It is fascinating to observe how, paradoxically, the public quickly seemed to forget about the incident after initially expressing curiosity. The incident in question involved the government acknowledging the discovery of a wreckage that was believed to be a flying disc just days prior. However, as more details emerged regarding the wreckage and eyewitnesses began sharing their accounts of what they had witnessed at the scene, a newfound interest began to take shape. Prominent researchers assert that the events that transpired in Roswell hold significant importance within the realm of UFO research. They express surprise at the lack of public demand for answers regarding the nature of what descended on that fateful day. Amateur researchers, on the other hand, contend that military officials cannot be considered oblivious and are capable of differentiating between a UFO and a mere weather balloon. Interestingly, it has been reported that the initial revelation that the discovered object was indeed a UFO caused a sense of panic among the populace, prompting the military to backtrack on their initial statements. However, over the course of the past few decades, former employees who were stationed at the crash site and privy to insider information have gracefully come forward to share their testimonies. The in-depth exploration of this incident, considering both the government's initial admission and subsequent retractions, as well as the ongoing revelations provided by those present at the crash site, offer an enriching perspective on the events in Roswell. This comprehensive analysis aims to shed light on the substance of this significant occurrence and stimulate further inquiry. Matilda O'Donnell McElroy, a highly experienced senior master sergeant in the Women's Air Force, had a remarkable and captivating encounter with a humanoid being. It is documented that she had an extraordinary interaction with an entity known as El, who not only shared their name, but also divulged the origins of their existence, along with the purpose of their visit to our planet Earth. During this incredible encounter, El provided Matilda O'Donnell McElroy with enlightening insights into their origin and the reasons behind their presence on Earth. During the time of this encounter, Matilda, who was a mere 23 years old, recounted a fascinating tale of her ability to establish communication with a humanoid entity through the extraordinary power of telepathy. This entity, known as El, was the subject of Matilda's interview, wherein she revealed striking differences between herself and this otherworldly being. Matilda noted that while she possessed a biological existence, El, in contrast, did not share this characteristic. Nevertheless, El did possess a female appearance akin to that of a child in stature. The circumstances surrounding their initial connection were quite extraordinary, as it occurred following a crash where three individuals were aboard a vessel, tragically leaving Matilda as the sole survivor. This profoundly intriguing account sheds light on the enigmatic nature of Matilda's encounter with the extraordinary being named El. Matilda's report aligns with the experiences shared by numerous abductees, highlighting an intriguing discovery. According to her, the physical composition of the beings she encountered exhibited stark dissimilarities from that of humans, appearing to be constructed out of a synthetic material rather than biological components. Extensive research conducted incidents involving mysterious aircrafts reveals consistent testimonies describing these alleged aliens as displaying robotic characteristics, prompting comparisons to functioning machines. Some people who have had close encounters with these objects have vividly described their observations of these beings, 
noting their mechanical-like behavior devoid of usual human traits. These accounts mentioned their lack of blinking, peculiar movements, and an absence of any discernible emotional responses, reinforcing their perception of encountering highly advanced robots. Such revelations offer an intriguing glimpse into the nature of these encounters, and raise compelling questions about the potential existence of technologically advanced extraterrestrial life forms. In a subsequent interview for a book, Matilda O'Donnell McElroy offered her own speculation regarding the object's composition, suggesting that it may have been constructed using the same material as the advanced being itself. Intriguingly, she also proposed that both the object and the being possessed the ability to be controlled through the power of the mind. Despite her extensive interaction with Elle, Matilda noted a certain level of secrecy, as Elle seemed reluctant to divulge too much information on certain matters. This air of caution led Matilda to infer that Elle harbored a lack of trust toward military officials. Such realization served as a sobering warning to the nurse, prompting her to contemplate the unsettling notion that if aliens themselves were skeptical of humans, it didn't bode well for the reputation and trustworthiness of our own species. Expanding further, when questioned about her origins, Earl asserted that her civilization hailed from an ancient lineage that harbored immense power and influence. Intriguingly, their overarching objective remained focused on progression and advancement. Thus, it became increasingly apparent that Earl's presence on Earth was not a mere coincidence, but rather a purposeful mission undertaken by a formidable and forward-thinking civilization. In a letter penned by McElroy, the author delves into profound inquiries that demand the attention of humanity. These thought-provoking questions, which reside within these very documents, encompass the essence of our existence. Who are we as a species? What is the origin of our being? What purpose do we serve on this planet? In contemplating the existence of intelligent life beyond Earth, the author raises an important question. Why haven't they made contact with us? The letter urgently emphasizes the need for people to comprehend the dire consequences that could unfold, both physically and spiritually, if we fail to take decisive action to undo the enduring and far-reaching effects of extraterrestrial interference on our planet. It is worth noting that this particular story has a connection to an anecdote provided by Glenn Dennis, a mortician. According to Dennis, who worked as a nurse at the Roswell Army Airfield, she personally witnessed medical professionals examining beings that bore resemblance to humans but displayed distinct features such as elongated, slender arms and large, hairless heads. Dennis further disclosed that there were specific requests for caskets designed for children during the same period of time, which raises intriguing questions regarding the nature and origins of these unusual creatures. The inclusion of Glenn Dennis's account adds a compelling layer of detail to the larger Roswell incident narrative, shedding more light on the events and potentially expanding our understanding of what may have transpired. The television program UFO Hunters conducted an interview with Earl Fulford, an individual who was present at the crash site and participated in the cleanup operation. Earl, being one of the few surviving witnesses, shared intriguing details about the incident. He described the recovered material as remarkably lightweight, capable of springing back to its original form when compressed. During the show, the team presented various materials for comparison, including everyday foil and mylar foil. However, Earl immediately recognized that these materials did not match what he had retrieved from the crash site. He emphasized that the material he handled was virtually weightless and possessed a unique property of returning to its original shape, no matter how much it was manipulated. Earl expressed that he had never encountered anything like it before. Unbeknownst to Earl, the UFO Hunters team managed to recreate a material based on his description. When given the replicated material, Earl proclaimed that it closely resembled what he had encountered. He said the following, This one feels more like the material. We could squeeze it and it would pop back. The thickness and weight are similar. It gives me chills down my spine. End quote. This revelation added an intriguing dimension to the investigation, shedding light on the extraordinary characteristics of the crashed object's material. When considering the Roswell incident, a significant number of individuals currently hold the belief that there is a considerable amount of undisclosed information surrounding this event. The Mysterious Winchester Landing Incident During the mid-1970s, 
A series of UFO landings and subsequent encounters with mysterious beings occurred in Winchester, a city located in the southern region of England. Although not as widely recognized today, these events captured national attention at the time. Furthermore, multiple witnesses came forward with corroborating accounts of the initial sighting, indicating that whatever was observed along a peaceful road in Hampshire had tangible existence. This intriguing phenomenon, which unfolded in Winchester amidst media coverage, continues to fascinate and raise questions about the existence of advanced life. One aspect that adds to the intrigue is the fact that after the initial encounter, Joyce Bowles, the primary witness, experienced numerous subsequent encounters. These encounters consistently involved her being taken aboard an otherworldly vehicle where she had interactions with peculiar humanoid beings. While there may be skeptics, even within the UFO community, these subsequent encounters contain noteworthy details that often mirror those found in other cases of close encounters. Thus, it becomes evident that Bowles' experiences warrant further examination and consideration as they contribute to our understanding of these phenomena in a comprehensive and unbiased manner. Even though these sightings remain unresolved and continue to baffle researchers and enthusiasts in the field of UFO phenomena, they remain a subject of great fascination. As a result, they are periodically revisited in the hopes of unearthing new insights, additional information, or even potential witnesses that could shed light on the matter. The individuals involved in this event were Joyce Bowles, a 42-year-old woman, and her neighbor Ted Pratt, a 60-year-old individual. At approximately 9 in the evening, they were in a vehicle en route to the nearby village of Chilcombe. While journeying down the road, the group noticed an unusual orange glow suspended in the sky, seemingly floating at a relatively low height above a field situated by the roadside. As they proceeded on their way, their line of sight became momentarily obstructed due to hedges and trees, momentarily obscuring the light from view. However, it swiftly reappeared as they advanced further along the road. This captivating phenomenon held their attention, evoking a sense of curiosity and intrigue. During their journey, they veered off the main road and took a left turn onto a serene and peaceful country lane known as King's Lane. Due to the narrower road, Joyce decided to reduce her driving speed to a range of 20 to 25 miles per hour. Unexpectedly, without any prior indication, the car suddenly veered to the right and at the same time, the engine revved up autonomously. This peculiar occurrence was accompanied by a palpable sensation of density in the surrounding atmosphere, as if an enigmatic force was exerting pressure upon them. The unexplained heaviness added an eerie element to their experience, leaving them perplexed yet intrigued. As Joyce glanced out of the window, her eyes landed upon the sight of their vehicle now positioned along a grass verge. However, her concern deepened as she found herself grappling with a significant challenge in maintaining control over the moving vehicle. Within moments, a looming forest became a visible threat, rapidly approaching their path. Recognizing the urgency of the situation, Ted swiftly reached for the steering wheel, aiming to support Joyce in her desperate efforts to steer clear of the imminent collision with the trees. Suddenly, the car abruptly halted coming to an unexpected stop against an object that Ted described as an invisible barrier. Interestingly, this mysterious barrier seemed to possess a subtle flexibility, bending ever so slightly before completely halting their progress. After regaining their composure, Joyce and Ted directed their focus towards the windshield. To their astonishment, a cylindrical object suspended itself both in front of them and slightly ahead. What made it even more extraordinary was the discernible presence of a cockpit-like region where three humanoid figures, or at the very least their heads and shoulders, could be seen. As they observed the figures through the windows, they could distinctly remember that the figures seemed to be arranged in a manner resembling passengers sitting on a bus, with one figure positioned directly behind the other. Additionally, their recollection highlighted the fact that the craft was hovering only slightly above the ground, with an unusual mist-like substance visible beneath it. Adding to this, Ted vividly recalled the sight of what appeared to be four jets emitting gases, providing support to the hovering craft. These detailed observations paint a comprehensive picture of the scene, allowing us to delve deeper into the intricacies of the encounter. According to the recollections of Joyce, one of the individuals mentioned in the story stepped away from the object and proceeded to walk towards their vehicle. Coinciding with this, a peculiar whistling sound similar to that of a kettle began to resonate in the air. 
As the figure drew nearer, Joyce could discern that they were clad in what appeared to be a silver-blue boiler suit, which extended all the way up to their neck. Interestingly, Ted recalled that this attire seemed to shimmer as if it were being gently shaken by an invisible wind. Furthermore, both witnesses were unable to recall any buttons or seams adorning the clothing worn by the figure, adding to the mystery surrounding their appearance. To their growing astonishment, much to their sudden realization, the presence materialized seemingly out of nowhere, astonishingly finding itself positioned right beside the driver's side of the vehicle. A penetrating gaze from the enigmatic entity pierced into their space, as if it had effortlessly emerged into existence. In appearance, this peculiar being exhibited strikingly human-like features, with the exception of its mesmerizingly vibrant pink eyes. Joyce, with a keen eye for details, attempted to gauge the figure's physical attributes, approximating a towering height of approximately six feet, adorned with cascading locks of lustrous blonde hair and a luxuriant beard adorning its countenance. As Joyce directed her gaze towards the man, she instinctively glanced over her shoulder, catching sight of the hovering craft. To her surprise, three distinct figures stood aboard the vessel, their gazes fixated on the unfolding scene. Shifting her focus back to the man, she couldn't help but notice the unsettling expression etched upon his face. Curiously enough, Ted would later recount his contrasting experience, wherein he found himself overwhelmed by a sense of peace and tranquility upon glimpsing the very same face. The stark dichotomy between their emotional responses adds an intriguing layer of complexity to this encounter. The human-like figure persistently observed the individuals inside, subsequently shifting focus to the control panel before proceeding to the rear portion of the automobile. This behavior demonstrated a keen interest in the occupants, as well as a deliberate engagement with the vehicle's operations. As Joyce observed, the unidentified figure began to move in the vicinity of the vehicle, creating the impression that Ted intended to exit the car, thus prompting her to lean over and intervene to prevent him from doing so. It was during this momentary lapse that she involuntarily closed her eyes. However, as soon as she reopened them, she was taken aback to discover that both the hovering object and the enigmatic figure had inexplicably vanished from sight. This unexpected turn of events left her bewildered and curious about the mysterious circumstances surrounding their sudden disappearance. After a short pause to collect their thoughts, the two witnesses, Joyce and her companion, prepared to continue their journey. Joyce turned the ignition key, engaged the car's first gear, and eagerly attempted to move forward. However, much like the perplexing force that had halted their vehicle earlier, an intangible obstruction prevented the car from budging an inch. Frustrated but determined, Joyce decided to switch off the engine, hoping that this would somehow alleviate the unseen resistance. To her relief, when she once again started the car, it effortlessly began to move forward, free from any hindrance or impediment. Upon their return, precisely at 9.25 in the evening, Joyce wasted no time in recounting the peculiar encounter to her husband. In response, he took it upon himself to reach out to the local BBC station in order to inquire if any other similar incidents had been reported. This conversation eventually led to both him and Joyce being invited to appear on the BBC's news show the following day, where they would have the opportunity to share their extraordinary experience. Subsequently, their story garnered significant attention and they were invited to make an appearance on BBC National News, ensuring that their extraordinary encounter reached a wider audience. In the realm of strange occurrences, this particular episode was merely the inaugural event in a subsequent sequence of peculiar happenings. Furthermore, the consequences of this encounter materialized several days later, manifesting as an unconventional skin eruption on the posterior region of Joyce's cranium and shoulder. Delving into the intricacies of this inexplicable phenomenon, we begin to comprehend the profound implications it carries, as the enigmatic rash leaves us with more questions than answers. A matter of even greater concern arose when she found herself on the receiving end of an unsettling phone call from an individual who identified themselves as a representative of the government. This mysterious caller, in a direct and forceful manner, warned her against discussing the encounter she had experienced. Astonishingly, this warning was reiterated when the same person made another call to her shortly thereafter. 
Adding to the peculiarity of the situation, her telephone line remained engaged for several weeks following the encounter, persisting even after she hung up the receiver multiple times, an action that should have disconnected any ongoing call. In defiance of the cautionary words she received, Joyce ultimately chose to disregard the warning and proceeded to share the details of her extraordinary encounter with the local and national media outlets, opening up about her experience to a wider audience. The incident mentioned in the text caught the attention of not only Joyce and Ted, but also the Daily Mail newspaper, who went on to conduct their own thorough investigation. In their pursuit of the truth, they managed to uncover several other witnesses from the same area, who claimed to have observed the exact same object that Joyce and Ted had described. As the story unfolded, the subsequent encounters took an even more bizarre and enigmatic turn, captivating not only the locals, but also gaining national attention. The unfolding events surrounding Joyce's experience became a matter of great curiosity and intrigue, with the story spreading throughout the entire nation. Approximately six weeks later, specifically at approximately 6.30 in the evening of December 30, 1976, Joyce and Ted embarked on the very same journey they had undertaken that fateful November night. Remarkably, not only did they once again encounter an eerily similar unidentified flying object, but to their astonishment, they abruptly found themselves being transported aboard it, accompanied by the enigmatic beings they had previously observed. Shortly after, a brief span of time passed, and both individuals perceived a distinct whistling sound, the very same auditory manifestation they had observed during their prior encounter in November. Once again, the vehicle commenced trembling and vibrating with an eerie sensation, as though an external force or presence was exerting control or manipulation over it. Subsequently, their consciousness seemed to fade into oblivion, and when they regained awareness, they found themselves standing outside the car. However, to their bewilderment, they were not on the familiar road, but instead located within the confines of an enigmatic and unconventional chamber. As they surveyed their surroundings, they unanimously concluded that they were situated inside an exceedingly peculiar and baffling craft. This unforeseen turn of events left them perplexed and seeking answers to the inexplicable circumstances they now found themselves in. When the group entered the room, they found themselves accompanied by three humanoid beings who were unmistakably the same individuals they had encountered previously. These figures were dressed identically as before, but upon closer inspection, Joyce noticed that they were also wearing sparkling silver boots. As she drew nearer, Joyce couldn't help but notice that the fabric of their clothing resembled tin foil. It shimmered and reflected light in a similar manner. One interesting aspect caught her attention inside the room they were situated in, which has also been observed in previous cases, involving individuals claiming to have encountered UFOs. Specifically, she observed a peculiar feature at the center of the room, a significant bottle-like structure that emerged from the floor. This structure exhibited a wide base gradually narrowing as it reached the top. Additionally, it was adorned with peculiar black and yellow rings. Although she was unable to fathom the purpose of this structure, other witnesses have reported similar details and suggested that it served as a vital component of the craft's propulsion system. This intriguing observation adds to the growing body of evidence regarding the consistent nature of these unusual encounters. The human-like creatures engaged in conversation with the duo employing a limited knowledge of English, but effectively communicating their intentions. They assured the pair that they harbored no ill intentions and sought to alleviate any fears or concerns. During their encounter, the couple was exposed to a wide array of technological devices and even had the opportunity to examine star charts. However, their recollections of the entire incident were vague and incomplete, leaving them with only fuzzy memories. They vaguely remembered being escorted back to their car but when they regained consciousness, they found themselves on an unfamiliar road. Interestingly, despite the unusual circumstances, Joyce experienced a sense of tranquility, while Ted couldn't shake a distinct feeling of unease. It seemed as though there was something foreboding that his memory was refusing to recall. Delving into the details, we discover that the couple's encounter was not limited to just a casual observation of futuristic gadgets and celestial maps. The intensity of the experience was such that the timeline of events became hazy and their minds struggled to hold on to every detail. Gradually, 
their consciousness returned to their surroundings. In the month of May 1977, approximately five months after the previous incident, Joyce unexpectedly found herself embarking on yet another extraordinary encounter. Just like before, Joyce was behind the wheel, accompanied by her dear friend, Anne Strickland, and as fate would have it, they were about to witness something truly remarkable once again. In the distance, there appeared an awe-inspiring cigar-shaped object, emitting a magnificent and radiant glow. This extraordinary event left them in awe and wonder, as they couldn't help but ponder the significance of such an encounter. Joyce halted the vehicle, causing it to come to a complete stop, while the two women observed with anticipation as the unidentified craft gracefully descended from the sky. Their eyes locked onto the sight, as one of the humanoid forms emerged from the vessel and promptly made its way towards them. As the approaching figure closed in on their position, it stretched out its arms in a gesture of openness and goodwill. At this juncture, a wave of intense fear overwhelmed the two women, surpassing anything they had ever experienced before. However, their apprehension was soon disrupted as the enigmatic being started communicating with them using the English language, albeit in a rather fragmented manner. After this intriguing exchange of information, the enigmatic figure turned around and made their way back to the spacecraft from which they had emerged. To everyone's astonishment, the craft then slowly ascended into the sky, eventually vanishing from sight. Joyce found herself in the midst of yet another otherworldly encounter, approximately a month later, during the month of June. Once again, she was accompanied by her neighbour Ted Pratt, while on a drive. Interestingly, this encounter followed a similar pattern to the previous two incidents, as both Joyce and Ted appeared to have undergone what can only be described as encountering an otherworldly entity. According to Ted's account, they found themselves once again in the presence of the cigar-shaped spacecraft. Much to their surprise, the humanoid figures, clad in what seemed to be dull, metallic suits, were also present. In a scene reminiscent of their previous encounter, there was a peculiar exchange of communication and information between the humans and the enigmatic beings. It was during this interaction that one of the figures conveyed warnings, shedding light on various wars and the detrimental impact of humanity's actions on the planet. Deeply concerned about these pressing issues, the humanoid figures reluctantly bid farewell and retreated back into their extraordinary craft. This encounter not only reiterated the existence of the mysterious cigar-shaped craft, but also imparted crucial insights into the consequences of human behavior on a global scale. After this particular event took place, the sightings abruptly ceased. However, subsequent investigations would shed light on some intriguing revelations pertaining to Joyce. It was discovered that over the course of several years, she had also encountered numerous instances characterized by poltergeist-like phenomena. What is particularly noteworthy in this case is the correlation often observed between individuals who claim encountering mysterious beings and their experiences with the paranormal, particularly incidents reminiscent of poltergeist activity. This connection suggests a deeper relationship between alien encounters and the paranormal realm, which may be more substantial than many of us realize. A fascinating aspect worth exploring is Joyce's revelation about her encounters with peculiar psychic manifestations and incidents of poltergeist-like activity that have occurred since her early childhood. It is intriguing to note that various objects and ornaments would frequently move on their own, a phenomenon witnessed by multiple members of her family. Moreover, Joyce frequently shared sightings of a mysterious white-robed lady, a figure that other family members also claimed to have seen, albeit without being able to discern any specific features. This suggests a recurring and captivating presence that has intrigued Joyce and her family throughout their lives. In the years preceding her encounters in late 1976 and early 1977, an intriguing and unsettling series of events occurred around the protagonist. This series of events, which dates back to 1972, involved her witnessing several apparitions or ghosts within her own home. The experiences were so alarming that she sought help from the local church, specifically requesting two exorcisms to be performed. This additional information sheds light on the depth and complexity of the protagonist's paranormal encounters, offering a comprehensive understanding of the events leading up to the main storyline. During an interview with a BBC reporter, she would vividly recount a haunting encounter in her bedroom, 
where she witnessed the presence of a lady who bore a striking resemblance to a nun. In the days and nights preceding the initial UFO sighting in November 1976, Joyce vividly remembered encountering an enigmatic and elusive shadowy figure positioned at the top of her staircase. Initially, she didn't give much thought to this peculiar occurrence, but in the aftermath of a series of subsequent encounters with unidentified flying objects, she began to speculate if this mysterious figure could potentially be one of the advanced beings associated with the spacecraft. This introspection prompted her to delve deeper into the puzzling nature of her experiences, searching for connections and meaning between the figure and the otherworldly phenomena she had witnessed. During their investigation, the authorities discovered multiple additional sightings that occurred in close proximity to the initial encounter in November 1976. Notably, Mr. and Mrs. Haynes came forward with their own account, asserting that they had observed an individual dressed in a silver outfit near one of the nearby hypermarkets, located approximately seven miles away from Joyce and Ted's incident. This additional testimony adds further credibility to the overall phenomenon, shedding light on the widespread nature of these sightings during that particular period. Several additional individuals also claimed to have observed similar phenomena, although they did not directly see the occupant who supposedly caused it. Sandra Wheeler, for instance, asserted that she witnessed a luminous orange object hovering in the vicinity of Horton Heath. Similarly, Maureen Lovely reported having observed a remarkably similar object for approximately 20 minutes while in Winchester. Furthermore, Mr. and Mrs. Boise from Ulresford reported an additional sighting from a relatively close location, describing the presence of two suns stationed above their heads. These accounts corroborate the existence of the unidentified object and further enhance the credibility of the initial report. In addition to the nearby sightings mentioned earlier, there were also reports from individuals who were farther away from the initial location. One significant incident occurred when Mrs. Atkinson was travelling from Portsmouth to Swindon with several passengers. During their journey, they observed an unusual object hovering above them, adorned with numerous luminous lights. This extraordinary sighting left a lasting impression on the witnesses. Furthermore, on the day before Joyce's initial encounter, specifically on the evening of November 14th in Southampton, Mr. Baker had his own remarkable experience. As he was en route to a friend's house, at approximately seven in the evening, he noticed a massive orange disc traversing the sky. While the initial encounter seems highly credible, especially considering the plethora of other witnesses that investigators eventually uncovered, the subsequent encounters took on a more extravagant and fantastical nature, it is worth noting that many of the more outlandish claims regarding interactions with extraterrestrial beings, which have ultimately been proven to be hoaxes or fabrications, often stem from a genuine initial encounter. While the initial encounter presents compelling evidence, further exploration reveals subsequent events that appear to be more sensational and far-fetched. In the realm of extraterrestrial encounters, it is not uncommon to come across instances where genuine experiences serve as a foundation for subsequent falsehoods or exaggerations. Nevertheless, numerous investigators at that time also reached the consensus that there was hardly any motivation for these witnesses to invent such a narrative. This lack of incentive stemmed primarily from the fear of public humiliation and mockery that each witness would inevitably face, especially in light of the subsequent disclosures and revelations. It has also been observed that there may be a correlation between the psychic elements and energies attributed to Joyce Bowles and the UFO sightings she experienced. In fact, over the past few decades in the 2000s, numerous researchers have proposed a link between unidentified objects and various aspects of the paranormal realm. From this perspective, if we acknowledge the validity of Joyce Bowles' testimonies, these encounters could hold significant significance. The exploration of this connection further delves into the depths of the paranormal, expanding our understanding and enriching our knowledge in this field. If we direct our attention towards the findings put forth by Jenny Randalls, she would draw our focus to various similarities observed in another incident that unfolded several months later in Nelson, Lancashire. One of the most noteworthy resemblances was the accounts of witnesses experiencing a peculiar pressing force while the unidentified object remained within their sight accompanied by the impact it had on the vehicle itself. Nevertheless,
There were other notable parallels, including the similar shape of the object itself, as well as the presence of red and orange lights. By delving deeper into Randall's research, we can unravel a multitude of intriguing connections between these two incidents, shedding light on the broader implications and potential explanations behind these extraordinary events. So, what do you make of these mysterious events? Be sure to leave your questions and answers in the comments section below and help us to grow this community while working to solve these unexplained mysteries. Thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe for more videos.